Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on wherever you are. As you know that we are celebrating this very holy 133rd birth anniversary of our master, Sri Siddhakur Anupul Chandra. I am here to talk about management of failure, which actually sprouts from management of anger. So I would like to intertwine both subjects and touch base on both of these elements. This is a serious malady in our age. Sissi Thakur focused in his epoch-making book, Shottanusharan, saying, failure need not be weakness. To fail to try is weakness. If despite all out effort of mine in anything, I still fail to succeed. No harm. I must carry on. I must not stop. That unblemished effort must carry you, me toward the goal. Once Jesus was in the midst of some devotees in a mountain near Nazareth, he answered to one of the queries of a devotee that what is the most important commandment in our life? Said he, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second most important commandment he talked about that I must love my neighbor as myself. One of the most Favorite subjects Sri Siddhakur had wanted to impress upon us was the value of human eugenics. A branch of science that deals with how to procreate compatible offsprings with a keen sense of determination a practiced, avowed discipline and a distinct purpose of life. Someone suggested, he was a very senior person in our ashram then and time, he said he was afraid that human eugenics was a field that it one time offered much promise but has produced very little practically to the modern world. In other words, the subject fizzled in the dynamics of the modern complex world. Sri Thakur retorted by saying, just face the fact. But analytically, synthetically, and sympathetically, with earnest inquisitiveness and wistful intellect, seek for the common factor and nurturing mechanism in each and every existence. Thus, while we are cultivating this common factor and nurturing 
the dynamic mechanism of each and every existence, Sri Siddhakur wanted us to acquire and systematize a knowledge that includes all differences and similarities, actions and interactions. He said, surely you will distinguish through graduated perception the shining door where varieties and variations meet in the universal, all-wise entity. He continued to say, It is my faith that though we fell a thousand times, yet when one favorable point that fulfills life's hankering to evolve is discovered, it allows thousands of individuals to gain. So, why you worry for matter of inability or unsuccess? Why not exercise and administer to gain that point even amidst the thousand failures that crowd around you? Sissi Thakur once observed in one zoo or in one jungle, I do, do not remember, he saw a goat that was striving to arrive at some blossoming leaves in spring. He was trying to reach those lovely pieces of leaves to consume and to sustain his or her existence. Sissi Thakur found out that the goat was persistent. He was failing many times. But he was managing his failure so beautifully that Sissi Thakur remembered Charles Darwin's process of evolution. He was questioning to some devotees around him that perhaps this is how a goat can become a giraffe by the process of evolution. I remember at one point of time, Shatsang needed a lot of funds to buy a lot of bricks. Shatsang in the then Himayitpur Pabna, now in Bangladesh, needed probably millions and millions of bricks to establish our ashrams, different departments. Sissi Thakur institutionalized Shatsang Chemical Works, Bishu Biggan Kendro or World Science Center, Shatsang Press, Shatsang Cardboard Concern, Shatsang Mechanical Workshop, Shatsang Furniture Units, and so on and so on and so on. And of course, uh, the Duto Dipti Hospital, where today we have a hospital setting with most modern equipment, devices and doctors flock together to serve 
the mankind and it is indeed a charitable institution that satsang does not charge anybody any money but at that time sisi thakur needed many 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 bricks to buy many bags of cement many bags of sand and things of that nature and sisi thakur realized that satsang could not procure that much fund that quickly for the purpose so sisi thakur started thinking this he went to to a different brick store to find out the price of that he got a quote he analyzed he failed many 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 times but he showed the perception of not being thwarted the perception of not being failed by the actual failures instead he mustered the reality that failures are actually the pillars of success so what he did it was pretty innovative in nature you know there was a river flowing across our uh, uh our ashram and uh, he created something like a sieve during the high tide and when the high tide would bring a lot of water in that place he would lock the door so that the extra water that came in the high tide would not escape that lock locked mechanism and in the process in the silt there is a lot of sandy beautiful mass of earth that was used to create bricks and in this process sri sri thakur taught us the theory of the dynamics of innovation he innovated that even in the middle of nowhere instead of buying bricks with lot of money which we did not have he innovated and instilled the faith in the ashramites so that every mother i i read in a book i did not witness it every mother every brother in the community came and helped sri sri thakur to make many 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 bricks ashram needed to generate electricity now at that point sri sri thakur had two or three very eminent scientists one was sri krishna prasanna bhattacharya the other was gopal chandra mukherji so sri sri thakur once talked about that if we want to buy electricity from the municipality forget it because there was no such thing although he used to keep in touch with what is going on in america with what is going on in europe because of his american and european mostly american devotees but in nearby hamlet where sisi thakur was and where our ashram was there was nothing to buy from the generated electricity so sisi thakur wanted to innovate this innovative skills instilled the faith in the big scientists krishna prasanna bhattacharya i can uh, remind you of a profile about krishna prasanna bhattacharya that he was actually the co um scientists that actually led 
the Nobel Prize in Physics for Dr. C.V. Raman. So Dr. C.V. Raman and Dr. Krishna Prasanna Bhattacharya, these were the two duo that used to work on the same project. Sri Thakur asked Krishnoda, Krishna Prasanna Bhattacharya, Ki, is it possible if we have a long copper wire tied to the kite and if we are able to fly that kite with the copper wire connected in a little uh, you know balloon type mechanism then perhaps in the stratosphere or ionosphere or whatever sphere it is we can try to gather and collect some electricity of course we have to find out how to store that electricity eventually sure enough after three or four or five or six attempts the kite went up in the sky after many 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 failures Sri Thakur never wanted to give up. They felt shocking result, literally shocking result. They felt that the electricity was indeed generated in that piece of wire. You know, he would not consider himself a Christian, a Muslim, a Hindu, or a Buddhist in any unique sense. Yet, to many Americans, Sri Siddhakur exhibited and advocated a sense of responsibility toward the environment that is more often associated with sort of Christian concepts of social obligation than with some of the Hindu notions of escape from this unreal world into a communion with some ultimate reality. I have heard from a genuine devotee of Sri Sri Thakur that once Sri Sri Thakur told him that he came to this world with express purpose to fight four things, death, disease, ignorance and poverty. To combat poverty, Sri Siddhakur said, good breeding is essential. And then of course education with every active thoroughness in a meaningful consistency that nurtures being and becoming. Then he intertwined death and disease in one word, in one sentence. When he was student of medicine in National Medical School in Calcutta, Sri Siddhakur wrote in his diary that death is a curable disease. He went on to say later on, do not die, do not cause death, but cause death to death. In other words, his Sisi Thakur wanted to impress upon us that poverty can be only wiped out if I execute what needs to be done, not thinking about it, not talking about it. In the book Message, Volume 8, Sisi Thakur said on economy of genetics that it is not a fact. It is not a fact that material economy is the state of life. Let us rethink this. He is saying, it is not a fact that material economy is the state of life. But it is true and an eternal fact 
the chaste and compatible economy of genetics is truly the wealth of the world. We cannot manage the failure until we learn how to manage our complexes. Let me try to narrate some stories of multiple failures and eventual disposition of success. Thomas Edison, when he was a student, his teacher said he was too stupid to learn anything. He was actually fired from his first two jobs for being non-productive and a classic non-thinker. As an inventor, Edison made 1,000 unsuccessful attempts at inventing the light bulb. When a reporter asked, how did it feel to fail 1,000 times? Edison replied, I did not fail 1,000 times. I did not fail 1,000 times. The light bulb was an invention with 1,000 steps. He said, I have not failed. I have just found many, 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 many ways that won't work. One of the greatest basketball players in the history of the game of basketball, Michael Jordan, he was rejected and cut out from his high school basketball team. Can you believe that? He never gave up and went on to play 15 seasons in the National Basketball Association of the United States of America. And eventually he won six championships with the Chicago Bulls. Jordan once observed that I have missed how humble he was. He said, I have missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I have lost almost 300 games. He said, I missed 26 times. I have been trusted to take the game winning shot. I have failed over and over and over again in my life. That is why he succeeded. Walt Disney, Disney the innovative businessman of the century by promoting amenities and sports and some cultural traits of America into the most successful entertainment business in the planet ever created, Disneyland and Disney World. He was fired by a newspaper editor. The editor said in his memoir that Walt Disney actually lacked imagination and had no good ideas. He even went bankrupt several times before he built the iconic Disneyland and Disney World. Henry Ford failed and went broke twice before he succeeded at establishing his company. 
Ford Motor Company became the number one automobile company in the world by the wisdom of Henry Ford and his takes and his story of his failures. To sum up, all of these people had one thing in common. They failed, but they never gave up. And because they never gave up, they succeeded. As Shri Thakur says, once again I want to repeat that iconic message, that failure need not be weakness. To fail to try is weakness. If despite your all-out effort in anything, you fail to succeed, no harm, carry on. Do not stop. That unblemished effort must carry you toward the goal. Once an American devotee asked Sri Sithakur about the heavenly nirvana that ignores the material world as illusion. Sri Sithakur's response was that don't try to enjoy your life in heaven after demise or death only, but in communion with your Lord, strive to bring that heaven on earth through faith, love and charity with an enlivening breeze of sympathy, service and nurture. Anger management is actually a twin sister of failure management. To that point, Sisi Thakur said, should you feel aversion or anger in doing any work, know for sure it is on the verge of failure. Obsessed ego brings forth addiction. Addiction breeds selfish interest. Selfish interest gives birth to passion. Passion is the source of anger and anger begets violence. I think nobody is miserable by nature. That's what Sri Thakur proclaimed. If one wishes, he can drive it out. He asked us to pray to the Supreme Father. Thy will is good. I don't know what will make me good. Let thy will be fulfilled in me and in fulfilling his will or desire, we attain the blissful confidence of achieving the ability to manage the failure and more importantly, manage the anger. I think I have tried, but because of my lack of eloquence and lack of my wisdom, I could not bring out the meat of the subject, but I would say that let us not try to be gloomy, let us not be sorrowful. Success must come because delirium, the delirium of distress is not a sign of the skillful. If I am skillful, I need to know how to manage my failure, how to accept failure as part of my equation of the disposition of success process. Good night, good morning, or good evening, or good afternoon, wherever you are. It is seriously an extreme source of pleasure for me to touch base with you guys. I pray to the Holy Father to keep all of us healthy, wealthy and purposeful and become realistically attached to the source of love, to the source of being, 
to the source of all becoming, whether they are inert or whether they are alive. God bless. Joy Guru. Bye for now.